Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I, I'm looking at my watch because anytime I see Sir Jerkface in the chat when it starts, I think I have the time wrong. It should be like 11 o'clock instead of 10 for him to show up. So is it really 10 o'clock? I feel, I feel like it's actually 10 o'clock and Sir Jerkface is here. So it's really confusing me a lot. Johnny Wilkes, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. How are we doing this morning? What's up, soy boy? I still got to look that up. Evan tried to explain that one to me. Um, and it looks like I kind of get it. And it was like, really? That's, 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 the, uh, that's the thing. Weird meeting schedule today. Yeah, you made me like verify my time. So definitely weird meeting schedule. So hope everyone's doing okay. Um, so for, for today, uh, since Sarah's in here, Inkwell Monster, she did the Kala Neon Inks Boogie review, so I hereby christen her Boogie for today. So if you ever hear me say Boogie, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to Sarah, so there you go. Mickey, it's two months of subbing. Thank you so much. Feeding the addiction. I love it. All right, thanks, Boogie. Appreciate you. So I guess everyone who, uh, everyone, all the writers who, who got uh, Kala Neon gets to be their nickname of the ink, so... Sarah's boogie, Jeff is dude, Susan's groovy. Pretty accurate. Like, I'm good with that. <clears throat> oh, the patent office. U.S. patent office? Is there, uh, is there an issue or is it like scheduled maintenance? <clears throat> Got your chip, Gumbo Man Pat. Thank you. I appreciate you subbing. I really, really appreciate that. Gotcha, Evan. So we got some we got some unboxings to do today. We'll have a shorter stream today, you know, maybe about an hour or so. Um, I got two new pins from Bennu Pins, which I definitely want to talk about. And then my Fujiyama Blue showed up last night. One day late, I was starting to worry about it. Um, okay, Foolish Fox. Yeah, I was wondering. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, my Fujiyama Blue was supposed to come in Tuesday night, and it did not. So I updated the track tracking Wednesday morning and DHL had it. Um, I forget exact the exact phrasing, but it was essentially on hold in Atlanta. So it made it all the way over here and was stuck in a warehouse. I figured maybe they're just, you know, not able to get the full um, allotment of shipping with everything that's going on with, you know, protests and COVID and all these things. So I'm pretty sure I have a Bennu Scepter and that's what they were reaching out for. Uh, I've talked to Kate at Bennu ever since they first started and like, we'll, we'll have this, I'll, I'll save this conversation for, for when I open these up. I think I have two pins in here. Um, and I, I, I can't remember exactly which ones I asked for, but anyway, the Fujiyama t yesterday morning, or by yesterday afternoon, I got a text that the status had updated and it was out for delivery and it showed up last night. So somehow I didn't tempt myself to unbox it uh, last night. I tend to not do too much pen stuff later in the evening. So by the time dinner's done and we're hanging out and I'm goofing off, it's like, do I really want to go ink up this pen as much as I want this pen? Do I want to go ink it up right now? And I was like, I'll just save it for save it for stream tomorrow. That'll be good. Oh, I got some good news on, on my internet front. They're laying cable out in front of my house. They have a ditch witch in front of the pole. Like all we have above ground wires where we live. Um, and you know, it's just like a, um, a contractor, right? So there's no markings on the truck. Like I have AT&T, but it could be like the cable company. It could be something else. They could be running who power, who knows what. So one of the neighbors went out and asked them, and uh, they said they're running Ethernet, which, I okay, you know, maybe that's how this, this fiber is transported in, in, in these cables. They're thinking it's Ethernet, but whatever it is. And the, the lady, this, this is a text from my wife between our neighbor and her saying, and she said, Ethernet? And they go, yeah. And she goes, Ethernet? What does that mean? She goes, it means you get faster internet. So... I don't care what they call it. <laughs> the contractor said they're wiring it for faster internet. This collar is bothering me today. So, fingers crossed, like sometime this year, I'm going to get faster internet, right? 
like the big old ditch which is sitting in front of our power pole like that's where the hub is for all the the houses in our areas in our front yard um so when new houses are getting built like they just built two houses across the street from us it used to just be forest um they have to come knock out our internet to rehook in these people and so hopefully if they're spending the money to get these laid down they're going to turn it on fast that's my working theory right that if they're going to if they're going to outlay the capital to actually finally run the cables they're not going to wait want to wait to turn it on right is that is that good logic that's that's the logic i'm going off of because i i know them they could run these cables and it'd be another year before someone comes out here and goes and allows us to have it yeah because they could charge me more right they're not going to let that expense sit there when i can give when they can allow me to give them more money so you have fantastic internet because of bobcat i watched your bobcat your your husband's bobcat tricks on the <laughs> on instagram those things are awesome <laughs> very mad skills <clears throat> so that's my that's my working theory. So one day, one day chat, you're going to turn this on and the background's going to be different and I'll be able to do a lot more streaming and I'll be able to make Twitch partner cuz that's a goal of mine. Like I'm really close. I just don't have the hours or in, but the uh the amount of viewers is ticking up, so Oh wow. That's awesome, Lisa. So he's got all the skills. So yeah. That was my that was my big news at home. Um more might be getting real internet at home. So there you go. Oh, Dave, Dave question. Do I get a special membership when I have my five year anniversary? I haven't thought about that. Um, anyone else? Yes, I would probably do something. Maybe I'll sign one for you. Dave. <laughs> I'll sign one for you. <laughs> I'm excited for me too, Tony. It'll uh, it'll change what uh, what I'll be able to do online and just do more stuff like we'll have some very boring stream days. My goal is to like turn on the stream while I'm working. Um, as hard as that is for me to do sometimes if I, but if I'm able to commit to more hours, I'll, I won't feel as guilty, like not chatting the, the whole time. We can just chat some and y'all can hang out and we can talk about pens because gosh knows we need to talk about uh, pens, more animal crossing streams. Yeah. I'll have like nighttime game streams. Cause that's what I'm playing now. Anyway, I haven't had, um, much gaming time recently, but if I do, it's at night. So that will definitely be a thing. I will have separate, no more exciting streams like dressing envelopes. You got me there, Evan. You got me there. So 24 hour office cam. No, it'll be just trying to keep my kids off cam if I actually do it. And, and they're allowed to come on cam. Tyler's going to want to stream. He's a little, he's a little, he thinks he's a little budding streamer, but uh, not yet. Not yet. So should we uh, unbox some stuff? Should we talk Bennu pins? closet of doom live cam if my internet's good enough and i can just like wi-fi stream from my phone i'll do it this opens up a whole world of pin atticness if if they come through with fiber or something like give me a, a hundred down 20 up and i'm gold like that's all i need but i don't i think it'll be more than that so i'm hoping i'm hoping it's a thousand I'm hoping it's a, like a 500, 100 type of deal. Oh, <laughs> oh, Tony, we'll do a whole, we could do a stream. There's two big bins of knock stuff like this big that are just stuffed in there. It's usually kind of like a, a one of each current thing, but there's some older stuff in there. So, so I'm not, I'm getting my hopes up in the fact that it is internet. I'm not getting my hopes up on f the timing aspect of it, right? You just never know with that kind of thing. But I do have my hopes up that this is actually internet that is getting run to my house and then we will be able to just change everything. All right, Benu Pens, Kate, Ekaterina, straight out of Russia. She just emailed me this morning, said, did I get the pins? I said, as a matter of fact, I did. I'm about to open them on stream. So maybe she's stealth watching me right now. She's been very cool to work with ever since Benu started. Which ones? We're about to find out, Jackie. Like, I remember picking them out, but I'll get the names wrong if I try to do it off the top of my head. 
So Kate's been super good to work with at Bennu. Ever since the day that they launched, she's been very uh, open to helping out bloggers and, and everyone um, getting the products. Coach Albino. Thanks for the sub. Two months. Hey, the alert thing worked right. All right. So no paperwork, right? Hopefully the names are on the boxes. No paperwork. If not, I'll pull up the email. The Bennu tattoo is one of the first ones that I really wanted to buy. So I've, uh, um, okay, it's got the names on them. So I have a lot to say about Bennu pens. They are, I love them because they are one of the most unique designs out there. And that doesn't mean that they're great for everybody, right? It's one of the most, um, let's go with charismatic pin brands out there. They're all just like the ultimate, like Lisa Frank meets Rhinestone Cowboy meets, um, you know, Star Trek type of pin, right? Like it's really, really hard to tell like what the idea is and even though the Bennu pins have traditionally not been my thing I love them so much because I see the joy that they bring other people when I was working at pin shows for Lisa Van S the excitement that people have over finding these Bennu pins that were a perfect color for them or a perfect design for them or a perfect fit for them their style I loved it. I I loved every minute of it, right? So this is why like I can say, okay, I don't really I don't own a Bennu pen. It's not something I'm going to reach for every day and grab, but I love what Bennu pen is for how they make other people feel, right? Like that's a fair uh fair thing to do. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> All right, so we have a Scepter 4. Scepter 4. So do the do the Bennu's Bennu fans know what a Scepter 4 is? I I can't remember. Hey, good morning even supposing. So we have a step. Oh, let me show you just a little. But their packaging is pretty straightforward. Nice box, nicely done. Oh, Rook Nevermore. If you've never seen these, your your mind's gonna be blown. So it comes in a little paper sleeve on the interior here. Um, it's got some paperwork in there. I guess instructions. The Bennu pins make me feel like I was right about people's lack of taste. See, they just have different tastes than you, Tony. Yeah, see, this is this is the ticket. Like, this is amazing. You ready? You ready? Boom. How good is that? Purple, pink, silver dust in there. I mean, that's it, right? That is the ticket. This is it. The Scepter one, Jackie, that exact one was on my list. So like I gave him, a, she told me to pick out a couple of pins. I listed five and I said, you know, whatever you think you, you want to want to promote. So these feel better than the original Bennu pins that I recall feeling the first like short cigar shape ones. Um, this is more substantial. Something on paper, Twitch Prime, 14 months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. This feels more substantial than the some of the original, just whatever the, the tapered uh, Bennu pins are. So let's see, is this worth doing a um, cam, desk cam for? So twist cap. And then, you know, tapered section. My biggest thing with the Bennu pins was that the section was pretty small in relation to the rest of the pin, right? But I think like, this one works pretty well. It's a little heavy in the back, but that's okay. Um, this is such a neat pen. Like, I love this. How's the grip? Like, it's skinny. It's tapered. It's just black plastic grip. Um, what nibs do they use? They just use generic nibs. I don't know if these are Schmidt. Yeah, Schmidt. These are Schmidt nibs, which I like the Schmidt nibs. The Schmidt nibs tend to be more consistent than the Bach. They're somewhere kind of in between the Jovo, Jovo and the Bach. Um... Yeah, like, look at this. It's pretty wild, right? So, ships with a converter. 
I mean, you're totally putting like boogie ink in this, right? Um, this color is Scepter 4. Yes. Yeah, so do they, so a foolish fox, do they give the color a name? So this is the Scepter 4, according to my box. Scepter 4. But does it have a more specific name? Good morning, Tessa. So, like, this is great. Let's see if the, the desk cam will, will look it up any, anymore. The number is the name. I was just wondering if they called it any colors or anything. So it's just called the four. So it's not the four. The four means this colorway. This is not a colorway in the four series. Does that make sense? So, no, it's not totally picking it up here. But yeah, like Jackie was talking about the one, which is the Wonder Woman color scheme. Uh, it's red, blue with gold flecks like this. But yeah, this is pretty great, right? Like it is not my general kind of pen, but I respect exactly what it is and why it exists. Like I'm super happy that this pen exists, right? It's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> So there's another, there's, that's probably the best look at the color we're going to get today before I take pictures of it. <clears throat> so since Boogie's in the chat today, we'll, uh, we'll let her pick one of these out to review. Then I'll see what I'll do with the other one. So you haven't seen the, uh, seen the other one. Oh, be back quick, Rook, because I have another Bennu to open, but go ahead. I'm, I'm going to wait for you. Rook, you tell me when you're back and then we're going to, then we're going to open the next one. We'll see what's in here. Have you, you've reviewed a Bennu before for the blog? We've only had one or two Bennu reviews, and I can't remember if you did it or Susan did it. That is massive. It is wide, right? All right, so this is just product care, storage, cleaning. You just have the skulls you got in Chicago? Okay. Have you seen the Grand Scepters that are coming out this month? You mean like this? Blad ow. Blad ooch. Blad ooch. So she asked me if, if I wanted to review one of those. Please ask me a Twitch question, Hobby. We're waiting for uh, Rook Nevermore to come back. <laughs> to the annoyance of everyone else. <laughs> I just like, I think it's funny. Susan did? Okay, cool. But yeah, hit me with that Twitch question, then we'll get into the Grand Scepter. So, um, while, while Beth is asking, um, the um, Benu asked if I wanted to review the Grand Scepter. And I was like, we haven't reviewed enough of the other ones. Can we pick out two? Can I do one for a review, one for a giveaway, or something like that? And they were more than happy to accommodate that request. So... Um, they're very nice to work with, very easy to work with. The U.S., they actually have, you can deal with them direct. They do have a U.S. distributor through uh, luxury brands, which is all those Platinum, Colorverse, Bennu, Waldman, Noodlers. Is that it? Did I get them all? Oh, I bet Boogie's pretty cool on the Twisby Mini. That's a good idea. I haven't inked up my, uh, what am I, Joy? Oh, if we're doing names for everyone, I'm Joy. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. I do like pens. Stoop. I do like pens. I really like Pen Island, too. So, I, I just wanted to get ahead of you there. What is the purpose for subscribing for three months in June and three more in July? So, it's a cumulative. So, you only subscribe for one month, but you've been subscribed for 14 months. Is that what you're asking me? Like it'll say, um, like you only ever subscribe for one month. <clears throat> Sent me a picture on Twitter. I don't see it yet. We'll look in a second. Am I answering that right, Beth? So like if you scroll up and see, where's the last one? Something on paper, subscribe for 14 months. It's really just this month's subscription for one month that they've done for a total of 14 months. Oh, even supposing, that's a great question. I will have to double check. So if we're, 
if you buy a Twitch sub, and I think the math is different between direct sub and Twitch Prime, I think I get about 50% of Twitch Prime and a little more for direct. It They take a pretty large cut. So, um, yeah, I will double, I will get you that answer though. There, I mean, it's, it's, it's displayed in the back end. I'll just have to go look it up. It's, they take a bigger chunk than you think out of some, than compared to something like memberful, right? The memberful, I get a much larger percentage of Twitch. I get 50 to 60% of, but I think maybe when I'm partner, I get more. We'll see. So yes, it's the total month you total months you've been subscribed. So when you see those numbers, it's the total months you've been subscribed. And the the best thing about the Twitch Prime is if you're already an Amazon Prime subscribe Prime, Amazon Prime member, it doesn't cost you any more money. Where direct support is, um, you know, direct like out of your PayPal or whatever. Do Twitch stubs help you with subs? Help you with partner? I've hit that threshold. The threshold I need to hit now is concurrent 75 viewers or more. Like we have 64 I see in chat right now, which is killer, right? So I have to hit 75 viewers for like 20 hours a month. So even if I hit 75 right now, I don't have the hours because I only stream like two, three hours a week. But that will change immediately when I'm able to stream at home, hopefully. Um, and then like Rewizzle says, once I make partner, then I get a higher percentage of that $5. But you can assume like your Twitch Prime, I'm pretty sure that I get 250 out of Twitch Primes, which is great. Hey, I'm super thrilled to have it. But I've met the subscriber threshold so far. Um... Even supposing, I love you so much. Your sister uses your Prime to sub, but I've thought about just buying one. I've got a TPA membership that gives you more, right? Is there a way to upgrade your TPA membership? The TPA, the Panatic membership is the best way to support the work that I do. I get the largest percentage of that. Um, I also put a lot of work into that, so I'm hoping I'm giving you the value for direct that direct support. So that's always like my one thing that if anyone asks me, what's the one thing that I can give you money for. It's always gonna be the Panatic membership because it's the least amount of friction for you and it's the most benefit for you and it's the most direct for me, right? Everything else is a little bit different. Um, and is there a way to upgrade the TPA membership? I've So I've thought about doing things like, so people will do, people who create memberships will create <laughs> Jason, thank you so much. <laughs> I, it would be an excellent time to drop the link in chat. Someone hit that panatic.com link, Tony. Um, oh, CSI, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Just wait. Like, you're on episode eight. Things change fast in that first first hundred episodes if you make it all the way through. Um, and then you could, a lot of people will listen to the beginning and then listen to the current episode then go back and, like, eventually catch up so they can be current with the the main episode and then um the difference between the early episodes and the new episode ones are funny they're really funny so let me finish even supposing's question because i have this is something i've thought about so what members will do they can either do we could do like two levels of annual membership right i can say like the regular annual membership is x or i could do the ultra annual membership for 2x or 5x but you get no extra benefits other than the benefit of giving me more money right so does that make sense so i've never i haven't felt comfortable doing that yet um some people <laughs> uh, you're awesome mary <laughs> um the pen addict membership is the best thing you can do for me and just, you know, keep that going, keep it recurring. And I, I just love you so much for that, for those statements. I, that makes me feel good that like you, you enjoy like what I do. And I, I really appreciate that. So, yeah. So there would be 
a essentially a third level which allows members to give me more money while receiving no extra benefits and that's how it would be set up in the future or we could do it with extra benefits but i kind of don't like too much benefit segregation right i kind of want you can come in for a month or you can come in for a year but you're all going to get the same thing and even if i had like that third level that was you know the year but you're just going to pay more for the benefit of the year i almost don't want to give that tier like whatever the extra benefit would be a weekly video just for those 10 people that did that that doesn't feel right to me like i want the i want to give everything to everyone in that kind of way so that's something to think about it's something i have thought about clearly in the past um and i haven't been comfortable instituting it um so yeah yep uh thank you foolish fox i was going to mention that to csi maxo you can also start at episode 400 episode 400 we recreated kind of the the 101 you could do extra you could do exclusive merch i would you know i could always do like um a few extra like very like direct benefits um like that like writing a letter that would be crazy that would be the most exclusive benefit <laughs> oh yo 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 elizabeth d in the house um we are just gonna do i am working on my first exclusive merch for members but it's not done yet uh, I don't know when it'll be done. I do have, I'm ready to sign off on the Karen Dash um, for the Pen Attic. That'll just be open members first, but open to the public. I'm going to have a members only product that's not open to the public ever um, coming soon. Hey, is, uh, who is it? Who am I waiting for? I'm going to call him out. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Rook Nevermore. Are you back in the chat? I got another pin to open here. We're waiting on you, Rook. Come on. Not go back. Members only jacket. So you laugh about that, Evan. Don't laugh too hard. Don't laugh too hard. Oh, Rook's back. Hey. Rook's back. CSI, this is what we've built. Right? This is what our community is. Um this is what we do, right? And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing more. Fisherman vest for lifetime members. That's another plan that I've seen people do. Lifetime members, like you would do a lifetime membership for five hundred dollars, you know, something like that. That allows people to, to do that upgrade kind of thing. So, members only pen attic jacket. I will, I will tell you right now, I'm not making a members only jacket, but I do, I am kind of working on the members only in joke. Thing to be to be an in joke um jeff is a big fan of anoraks right so it's basically like the slip over thin jackets and he's made some of his own anoraks and we've we've never totally priced out that but we would always love to make like a notco anorak so csi the history is um i started a blog called the pin addict in 2007 as of about four years ago, I, uh, I was able to turn that into my full-time job. So this is my job now. I run a blog, Pen Addict, a podcast called The Pen Addict Podcast, which you found. Um, and then we just started working on – I'm a, I'm a gamer as well, so I was familiar with Twitch, and I like what Twitch offered uh, gamers. And I thought maybe I would play games on Twitch, but it's really just more fun to just hang out and talk pens on Twitch even though I don't do it for the amount of hours that like a gamer does. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it. Podcast is eight years. Yeah, 2012 was the podcast start. Members only mail-in artisanal pen cleaning service. That's totally the joke I made on Mark Backus's, uh, uh stream on his picture where he cleaned, had to clean that nib because it was so thrashed. Yeah, stuff is always buying more stuff is tough. You should make a hat. I have taught I have traded emails with Ebbets Field Flannel. Did y'all see the new Musgrave one? So I have that's the company that I have traded emails with. Yes, yeah, CSI, I find that too. Um I started like the very first game I streamed was probably Destiny. Um 
but re- lately I like more community driven games like Animal Crossing or Sea of Thieves, something where we can just go in and goof off. Right. Ebbets makes great hats, but they're going to be like 50 bucks a shot. And I would still do it. <laughs> they're pretty cool. Make Hawaiian shirts with custom PA print. Totally. Oh, this is all we talk about. This is like, so you're missing it right now, Alexander. Just wait. Like we're not, I don't have all the pins and everything out yet, but this is what we talk about. Like if you look back on some of my streams, you'll see pins splayed everywhere. All right. So let's, let's show Alexander this pin since Rook is back. This is the, uh, this is the Grand Scepter X from Bennu Pen. Y'all are going to trip when you see this. I peeked at it. So Dave, Dave has a, Sir Jerkface has a challenge to name the album cover that this pen references. So y'all ready? God, are y'all ready for this? I'm not speaking because there's no words. This is the Grand Scepter. We'll do a comparison in a minute, but this is the bigger of the scepters. No, it's the it's the New Order. Um, it's the New Order. Um, golly, I, I'm blanking on the title. Technique, technique. How wild is this? They're so bright, right? So like this, this, the pink on this one is not as translucent, lucent. It's pretty crazy. So we'll do a size comparison in just a second. Pull up the New Order album covers. Here, I'll do it. I'm going to put it on, on the screen here. That's all I could think about when I saw this pen. Hey, I was right. It's technique. So let me pull this up. So you can't really, that's a small picture, but that's all I thought of when I saw this pen. Yeah, there, there, that's the better representation. Yeah. Elizabeth's totally going to nab this for me. These pens look like chicken bones with sparkles. I am not going to be able to unsee that now. That is accurate. Yeah, so this is the bigger one, and we'll do a comparison. So there's there's the technique. Uh, that's what I think it looks like. Is that a Lamy in my pocket? Yes, and I am happy to see you. So this is a special Lamy in my pocket. I'll tell you about it in just a second. So let's uh, open this up. So same type of setup, same black sections. I don't know if this section's wider. I guess this has a larger nib. These are six nibs on here instead of fives. So let me get out the other one for comparison. But I'm pretty happy with what Bennu has done. They've like turned it up more than one notch with this with these pens. They have refined their process pretty well. What's up, Jesse? Bork and Bork, you got it. All right, so so this is the scepter, and then this is the grand scepter. They are oh, they're actually the same length, same size. I didn't realize that. I just assumed the grand scepter was smaller. It feels smaller, but I guess technically it's not. But it uses a number. F- the I guess the difference is on the front end. The step down's pretty sharp, but the section's long flip these around here so here's the here's the real difference of the pins so the scepter which is this one uses a number five nib and the grand scepter uses a number six nib the diameter of the section looks slightly wider on the number six nib so there's the difference even though length and size are the same the internals are slightly different with the nib size so um the step down, oops, wrong picture. Yeah, exactly, even supposing. Like, they're not for me, 
but what I've seen, the way I see people react to these pins in person and adore them, I love seeing that, right? So you can see the step down maybe a little bit here. Like you clear it pretty by a pretty significant margin, right? Like there's a pretty significant section. So the step ends up being pretty far up the pin. I'm a generally a low gripper. I'm hitting the flange right here. <clears throat> so I don't have any of the Bennu pin holders. So yeah. So that's the difference between a number five and a number six nib. Sorry, I got too much crap on the desk now. Yeah, I, that's 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 right, foolish fox. Like, this is not necessarily like if I would ever use a Bennu pen, it's now one of these, right? They're pretty spectacular. <laughs> Hitting the flange. Um. So yeah, I mean, like, look at this. Like, isn't that fun? And the prices aren't ridiculous, right? I think what's the the scepters like ninety nine? The the grand is like one twenty, one forty. I can't remember exactly how much. They're not cheap by any stretch, but they're not like outrageous. Like, I I just love. Look at the the way the color comes through there. That's ridiculous. It's really sharp, really nice. So, the weird inverse curve doesn't bother you when riding. What do you mean, Jesse? The uh, this part back here, or in the barrel, like in the barrel in my hand, or up in here? Which part are you meaning? Because I'm not really getting any, seeing any weirdness that would that would throw me off when riding. Like it fits my handwriting style. I have a very standard, what they call tripod grip for those who are new to, to pens. It's very like a three prong grip. It gets bigger in the back. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. No, because it's thin enough and light enough. A lot of pens do bother me with that size on the back end of the pen. This one doesn't, I wouldn't notice it. Now I will say this one fits my hand better. This is the larger one with the number six nib. With the number five nib, that might be more of an issue because that section's thinner. 88 for the scepter, 110 for the grand. Thank you, Foolish Fox. This one feels different. I can feel the weight in the back of this one more because the um, section is a little bit thinner, so that exacerbates the size of the back end of the pen. The material feels better than any Bennu pen I've ever tried. You know, when they first came out with those cigar torpedo shaped ones, I thought the the material was a little bit light and a little bit um, not high quality enough. These have a density to them, like like you. This is a solid solid material, not flimsy whatsoever. Boogie wants to review the grand. You got it, Boogie. So this is this could be like a pin spinner deal. Does anyone here spin pins? I, I've never practiced enough. All right, so Boogie's gonna review this one, and then I'm gonna give this one away at some point in the future. Sound good, chat? Look at that. I can't get over this pin. I might just end up getting one of these for myself. This is just spectacular. I am pleasantly surprised at how much I like these pens. I liked them as they were. I didn't necessarily ever want one. Good morning, Schmevelin. You know, does that make sense? Right? Like, we don't have to have all the things. You want to make sure you're spending your money on things that you're really going to enjoy and use. So, Bennu's never been that for me. These have changed my opinion a little bit. Good morning, Patrick. All for the number six Schmidt nib. Ooh, that almost came out very wrong. Yeah, I'm with you, Moto Lisa. So, yeah, these are pretty cool. Like, I am not, I am not disappointed in the least. <laughs> these are pretty good. These are pretty good, chat. 
All right. So I don't get to keep either of those pens. We're going to review one for the blog. I'll send it to Sarah at some point. All right, Steph, have a great weekend. We'll see you later. Brad, you didn't, I didn't see it. Yes, Patrick, you can see it. This is, this is the, the pen you need and I'll show you why. So let's show Patrick the, the grand scepter because Patrick, you need to buy this pen just so you can taunt your wife with it and keep it away from her. Say, this is my pen. Cause this is very much not a Patrick pen. Ready? Ready? I have to always have to surprise these. Boom. <laughs> That's freaking nuts. This pen just cracks me up. I love this pen. I, I'm not going to lie. I am really impressed with this pen. But it's a lot, right? Like you have to be, you have to know what you're getting to get into this pen. So, um, Patrick, that has you written all over it. I know you, buddy. All right, I don't get to keep either of those pens. The next one is mine. It's for me. I'm not giving it away. I get to keep it. We did it, chat. We did it. Look at that box. I love you. I love you, Bung Box. <clears throat> so this pen is for for Brad. Paperwork, schmaper work. I'm just glad it showed up and wasn't stuck in who knows where and who knows what country. It moved pretty quickly. What are we? We're, we got to be less than two weeks since I ordered this, right? From Japan. It's got to be less than two weeks. Yeah, how can you not smile with those Benu pins, right? Like, I am very happy. Always got to make sure there's not something hidden in here. Just my receipt, it looks like. Oh, there's an. It's got my name on it. I think this is a handwritten note. I don't know if that's printed, pre printed, or what. It's just thanking me. It's got my name on it. Brad Dowdy, and a little hedgehog guy. A little hedgehog guy writing a letter. Isn't that nice? Cute little guy. Um, receipt. All right, that's it for that box. Very cute. All right, so for those who are new to the chat, less than two weeks, Tessa? Yeah, I feel bad bragging about that, knowing what you went through. I just caught him at the right time with the, the, with the cutover, the postal cutover. So for those new to the chat, I know we have some new people watching today. Uh, I'm a big fan of Japanese pens and you know Japanese essentially the home of stationery. like I might get some pushback for that but you know I I'm willing to I'm willing to go there they're at least the home of the stationery that I love so um, there's a lot of companies over in Japan small stationery companies that are able to get pens made for their specific shops right so when we're talking about pens that a lot of us can buy like say a Lamy Safari, like you can find it at various retailers, right? And but it's all the same Lamy Safari at all the different retailers in Japan. Some of the big companies, Pilot, Sailor, Platinum, are the big manufacturers. Will go to these specific shops. In this case, this one's called Bung Box or Bungu Box, uh, which is essentially means stationary box, um, and make store special pins for them like in small batches 50 pins 100 pins whatever the number is so that's what this one is just to give new new watchers a little bit of feedback so this one's called fujiyama blue this is the box it comes in it's manufactured by sailor for bung box uh out of japan so like fury and king that's ex that's exactly right you have to but like it's difficult right you have to go to those stores like you have to manage to communicate with those stores who really a lot of them only end up um you know talking in japanese obviously so there's a little bit of challenge to make sure you're getting the order but that's what this is like this pen is an addition of a hundred although it's round two 
of the addition of 100. So that's how this one works. Um, so the first one was a few years ago. They made 100 of them, then they redid it. Um, changed the finial, maybe a little bit, maybe not enough from the original one. That's a whole other story. So yeah, um, but uh, like Fury and King, like if you, you can email them, they're able to communicate through email pretty well. Um, I've just, I've gotten to know them over the years. So I, I will admit I have a little bit of advantage communication wise there. Um, oh boy. <laughs> this is way more translucent than the picture showed, which I'm, I'm for. So, hey, Robo Jim. So there she is. Translucent blue barrel, solid turquoise blue finials, Mount Fuji, Rodden. We'll put up the uh, the desk cam in a second. Metal grip section. So this is the and it's the full size pro gear. Yes, it's the full size pro gear. So here's the funny thing about lighting. What you're seeing. The blue is what I see when I look at the product photography for this pen. What I visually see on the back side of the pen is a green pen with the light coming through the pen to see my side, I see a green pen. So yeah, like this is this is a Brad pen for like a lot of reasons. Rook, this is a very dangerous hobby. Like this pen is on a different level than most of the things that we talk about. And it's like a very special occasion type of purchasing the pens. So let's see if we can get it over here. Um, maybe this will give us a good background. So this is the box that it came in, right? Little little velvety, velvety blue box action. How much was it? It was right at 400. Uh, it's 4,100 yen plus 5,000 yen shipping. How does the metal f grip affect balance? It, um, yeah. So like all I see is green. Well, this makes it look blue, which I like. It's like a very oceany blue. But when I what I see in person is different from what you're seeing in the camera. Let's see if we can get that in there. So it was just over four hundred dollars plus shipping. This really doesn't like it. There you go. I have it upside down. So that's Mount Fuji and Rodden on the finial. Thank you, Tony. And then the section, the nibs are these, what are they? Are they their ink? Ink tells more. Is there stamping? On this pen. So yeah, I'm actually surprised at how translucent it is. I knew it was translucent. It's very translucent. So I love kind of the, the, the different tones it has. It's also got the extra stripe in the cap band, which you don't always see, right? So that stripe, basically the second stripe in the cap band, basically a three stripe cap band. So Patrick brings up the ultimate question it's got to be Mount Fuji ink, right? It doesn't. As much as it might be, it doesn't because the Mount Fuji ink is platinum. And I always tend, at least when I first get a really special pen like this, to ink it with a sailor. I th think, oh look, the translucent uh, twist mechanism on the converter. Sailors, worst converters, worst converters known to, to human being human beings. I'm thinking sky high. Yamadori is might be the answer though. So that's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, you're welcome, Tech Tessa. So sky high was my first call. I have a uh, Kobe, one of the Kobe numbered inks. That's a very blue, not quite as sky high, not quite as turquoisey as sky high, but I think I'm kind of set on sky high for this. So 
Um, I also have Yomagi, Yomogi. That's inked in another pen. I think that's probably a really good match for this, but I have it inked up somewhere. Yamadori might be too green. Yeah, Yomogi. How good is Yomogi? I'm going to review that soon. Um, Sky High is great ink. Yeah, so that's that's my initial thought of Sky High. Kobe, a G and C. I wonder what mine's called. Mine's just a number. The number. I don't know the official name of it. So, yeah. It's like number 24 or 25 or I think. So, anyway, that uh, that came in. That's uh, that's my latest my latest thing. Yeah, so I have the, the Esterbrook Lilac with the Yomogi in it. <laughs> Your husband's going to kill you. <laughs> so, I lo I do love the balance that the uh, metal section offers. Uh, Bork and Bork was asking earlier, you don't feel it when you're writing, right? It doesn't, it's not noticeable to me when I'm writing that, oh, this is super weighted at the bottom. But when you, when you have it capped or something like you can feel like it's in there. Oh, I've done that rewiz with a, a platinum converter. I did not see that there's going to be new Manyo inks coming out in August. I really, I'm so happy that Sailor did that. Really, really happy with that. Oh, Sailor includes black ink cartridges with these. At least include blue or blue black. What do you write? Mostly notes, um, a little bit of journaling, a little bit of drawing. So that's most of, most of my writing day to day. But my main job is I review pens. Wow, Potato Cat, which is a great name. I, I love that name. Um, my job is actually to review pens and stationery and ink and paper and all those things. So that's what I do. But in just general writing, um, it's just a lot of notes, journaling, not in a traditional sense, but like notebooks full of just scratches and uh, ideas and thoughts. So that kind of stuff. Whew. Um. I forget who was asking me. We had a new listener asking me early about Lamy Safari. I forget who that was. But yes, this is a Lamy Safari, but it's an Arushi coated Lamy Safari by one of our friends in the industry named Jonathan Brooks, uh, Carolina Pin Company. I carry this around just because I'm mean and evil. Um, this is specially made for me, and uh, I'm just going to tease people with it until they get to see it in person. Sorry. So you were right, though, that it was a Lamy Safari in my in my shirt pocket <clears throat> so yeah that's it that's it chat you're gonna make mike sad i'm gonna send mike's uh today oh jason there you go it, it literally is a work of art so go to my instagram not to like go full pimp here go to my instagram which is just pen addict and he made three of them there's three of us on my podcast the pen addict podcast myself my partner Mike and Anna, who we consider our, our third host. Our friend Jonathan made one for each of us. And if you go to the Pin Attic Instagram, uh, Jonathan Wilder, you, you're messing with the wrong guy. I make pocket protectors. <laughs> so I have a company called Knock that makes pen cases. We have one called the Fodder Stack. It was designed to be a pocket protector for your pens and notebooks. So got you <laughs> cool guy <laughs> so voodoo return back to you do there you go but there's not a picture of that one on there now tony because it's sold out <laughs> yeah fodder stack is is our version of the pocket protector i gotta get that back in stock people have been waiting years for that stupid thing it's literally it's the order's in. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated talking about them right now. Except in a mini. We're not going to make a mini. Ooh, green. Sailor made some. Sailor made some weird stuff. Weird ink decisions, didn't they? With the pricing wise. Like they, they did away with like these mainline inks for like over a year. Mm. 
I love seeing all the new listeners or the new viewers I have today. And that's been a trend here recently. I appreciate y'all hanging out. Uh, right now, during the weeks, I don't go very long. I've got other things to do. This is just kind of a little sidebar I'm doing. But coming soon, we're going to do lots of lots of pen talk for lots of hours, lots of days a week. I feel it, chat. We're there. We're there. Yeah, that's why I'm so happy with the Manyo. They not only did a great job, they priced it in line, you know, in the ballpark of what they used to charge. I mean, they have to raise the prices sometimes. But the way they did that kind of gap year where the prices were not right, um, I'm glad to see they've, they've come back in line. Wow, Potato Cat, appreciate the follow. You need a shirt company that will normalize a lower pocket in women's shirts. Is any women's clothing normalized? I don't think that exists. Ooh, Sir Jerkface, you have a, you have a mini? Nice. I don't even have a mini. Studio inks are great. I, I like the studio inks. Um, the Shikiori lineup, was, it, was that the name of the lineup? It was just, why would they price those that way? That was the that was the real kicker. Not as much the studio as the Shiki Yori. Or is that the color? Was the Shiki Yori the color? Yeah. So I, I'm just glad the menu lineup exists and I'm glad to see that it's gonna continue to exist. So thank you for that leak link, even supposing colors look great. Colors look really good. So yeah, like right when we're getting all these viewers, I gotta go today, chat. But oh, also have a linen toolbar, Tegan. Good. I hope you like it, Coco Lena. Right when I get all these viewers, I have to go. And I have one tiny bit of bad news that I almost forgot. I can't stream on Tuesday. I'm on a road trip to go pick up spoke pen inventory. That's another thing I do for all you new listeners. I make pens for help make pens for spoke design. I'm going to pick up on Thursday, uh, Tuesday is meeting day for spoke which means i got to get the hit the road um so i'm not gonna be able to stream on tuesday but just know that i'm getting internet at home soon i feel it it's in my yard something's gonna happen before too long and then we can adjust the schedule accordingly we can do more of this so all of you new new viewers please follow please set your alerts for when i go live my schedule right now is tuesday mornings thursday mornings 10 a.m eastern but i'm not going to be here next tuesday because i got work taking a, a roadie trip sarah's on it a roadie trip that's exactly what it is um i'm not going to pick up roadies but i'm going to get my samples of roadies linen toolbar you tell me that i'm just going to say it more linen toolbar that's mike's fault i wouldn't have done that so that's where we're at um i appreciate y'all hanging out i appreciate all the new viewers we legitimately talk about pens that's what this channel is about you know if i do other things i'll jump in a game channel but that's just doesn't happen right now um record a vlog maybe i'll do that on tuesday uh, about the pickup of the pens. so we'll see what happens but that's it for today I got to get the get back to the kids. Um, I got to get to work. Got a bunch of work to do. Um, and uh, just just know that y'all are awesome. I appreciate y'all hanging out. I appreciate your support. And uh, we'll be back on this stream soon. And uh, y'all have a good one. Bye.